Hey guys. So, some of you guys would be aware of the gambare thing. Gambare, gambarimas, gambate kurasai. So we actually talked about it in previous videos. Over the years, it's a, well, it was a fairly big part of Japanese culture. So it, gambare means uh, like try hard or do your best. There's not really anything in English that has the same power um, as gambare did. Don't know if it still does. But it was always a very powerful thing in Japanese culture. And kids were told from when they were, you know, one or two years old, gimbare, gimbare, from when they were little, you know. And it has, it has a lot of power. And the families would tell their kids, gimbare, and the teachers, gimbare, every, and their friends. Friends would say to kids, to, to, to their friends, gimbare. And it was just a big part of Japanese culture. Anytime there was something difficult or, or some sort of challenging thing that we had to do, anybody had to do, the gambare thing was there, and people would say gambare mas, and and meaning that they were going to try their best, and other people would say gambate gotta say, you know, do your best, and it's really powerful. It was really powerful in Japanese culture and Japanese thinking, and way more powerful um, than anything that we've got in English, I think. Um, I very rarely speak Japanese to my kids, but one of the few words I use to my kids um, is gambare because it has much more power in Japanese than any, any English equivalent. So that's always been the case. And we do know some Japanese adults who gambare, who, who you know, try hard and try their best and go hard. Um, and we know some kids who do as well. However, just in the last 20 years, it seems that we hear gambare much less. And we've started to hear two things, two things. One is give up. Now, Japanese people, it's a loan word, right? They've pinched it from English and there's no V in Japanese. So they don't say give up, they say give, give, give up, give up, right? Give up, right? And muri, which means impossible. And we're hearing it more and more. And I'll give you, I'll try not to give you too many examples, but it's hard not to. Um, the first one that comes to mind is, uh, I go to two different dojo, Aikido dojo, and Saturday dojo uh, has a adults class and a kids class at the same time, separate. So at one end of the dojo, there's a kids class and at the other end of the dojo is an adults class. And that school has uh, a group line. So it's sort of like, uh, line is sort of like Facebook or something similar to that. And, a, and you can have a group so that if someone sends a message to the group, everybody sees it, right? So the result of that is every Saturday morning, it starts early Saturday morning, messages start to come up. Oh, sorry, um, can't come to, to lesson today, right? And and it'll be, it'll be oh, it'll, often from mothers for their kids saying, he can't come, he can't come today because uh, he's had a big week and he, today he, he will take a rest, right? And I mean, this, this lesson is an hour and a half the adults one is fairly hardcore, but the, the kids one's a pretty gentle pace. You know, it's not really hard. But but every Saturday, you'll get a bunch of these, oh, he's had a big week, so he can't come today. Or um, this week was test week um, for high school students, junior high school students. And so, oh, it's test week this weekend, so I can't come today. And th th there's no way those kids are sitting at home studying you know, 48 hours over the weekend, right? They'll be playing games and watching TV in amongst studying. So an hour and a half in the dojo will do them the world of good. But, oh, he can't come because he's got test week this week, so he can't come. And the adults too. The adults too. Oh, I've had a big week and my, my body is tired, so I can't come. You know, really weak excuses. I mean, occasionally you get a... You, you get one that seems like it might be legit. You also get a lot, because it's Japan, you get a lot of the, the ones that you don't know if they're true or not. Oh, I have a fever, so I can't come. That's that's a classic excuse in Japan, because it's an accepted thing that, you know, if people have got a temperature over 37, for example, kids can't go to school if they get a temperature over 37. All sorts of different organizations and groups have rules about people with temperatures. If they have a fever over 37 or 37 and a half or whatever, they're not allowed to go. And so it's sort of like a get out of jail free card here. You can pretty much get out of anything if you say you've got a fever. Um, even a cold, even a cold, they'll say, oh, I, can't come, I can't come to Aikido because I've got a cold. But every Saturday morning, you get all these excuses come in. And then when we do get in the dojo, you get these kids in there that 
that just give up. That there's something that they can't do or that they're not good at. And when it comes time to do that, they'll just go and stand against the wall or they'll go and sit down and watch instead of doing it, you know? And the teachers, I mean, Juji Karate Dojo and uh, Judo Dojo are pretty strict and the teachers will really hammer the kids, you know? And they won't let them cop out like that. But in the Aikido Dojo, you know, they just sort of let them sit off to the, oh, come on, come on, come and do it with us. Ah, oh, no, and they sit off to the side, you know? And it's just this, this if it's hard, give up and they'll say they'll say give up or oh, give up give up give up give up give up or they'll say moody and moody means impossible and we hear that all the time oh moody 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 it's not and it's not impossible it's a kid doesn't want to do that thing or can't do that thing um okay th these are just flowing now i've got all these excuse uh, all these examples flowing now uh, ex almost said excuses because most of them are um there's another one my uh english friend my friend from england uh, has an English school, <laughs> and uh, when, he, when we get together, he just unloads all these stories on me about all these frustrating situations that he has, and this is one of his pet bears at the moment, is is that if kids don't want to do something, if they don't want to do the English lesson anymore, they just stop, and the parents will just say, oh, he doesn't want to do the English lesson anymore, instead of the parents saying, come on, it's good for you, you know, keep doing it, or instead of the Aikido teacher saying, come on, come on, do the practice, do it. They just sort of go, okay, and they let them in. And it makes you wonder, it makes you wonder why. It's possible because the Gambare thing was over the top. We might have even made a video, I don't know, 13 years ago, talking about the Gambare thing sometimes being over the top. So like mental health care and awareness of mental health and awareness of counseling and just general well-being, mental well-being in Japan is still like 50, 60 years behind the rest of the world, right? So they've really got no idea. And, and you know, as, as recently as maybe 12, 13 years ago, I think I made a video that said the Gambare thing can be over the top. I mean, you know, we know that there's actually someone in our extended family in Japan who suicided and and we suspect that, that what's happened there is when you when you are troubled or depressed or stressed or something in Japan, people would just say genbare, 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 and people would sort of reach the limit of their genbare and have nothing left, and they'd kill themselves. So about 30,000 people still, still about 30,000 people a year kill themselves in Japan. Um, I made a video about it. It's, it's more complicated than just the genbare thing. It, in, in Japanese culture, in, in Japanese history, uh, killing yourself was an honorable sort of uh, option. And so it's still considered to be an option in Japan, right? And so when people are overwhelmed, often they will. And, and it makes me wonder if one of the reasons that, that, that we're getting this give up culture at the moment is whether it's the fear of that and, and what in particular in our extended family there's actually a, a boy that just started junior high school and he was doing okay at elementary school he used to go to elementary school every day and he was just a normal student he's gone into junior high school and just can't deal with it and he tends to go about half about half the time so he'll average about two and a half days out of the week he'll, he'll, he'll go to school and he'll go to school and he'll come home early because he can't cope with it he's getting headaches and He's all stressed out and there's kids there bullying him, which is a topic of another video. But but what we heard about this one was his parents' attitude is, ah, oh, well, we'll just let him, we won't push him. Um, we'll just let him, if he needs to come home, he can just come home. Or if he doesn't want to go in the morning, he gets up in the morning and says, or he doesn't get up, he stays in bed and says he doesn't want to go to school, and they just let him stay home. And apparently the school counsellor the, the counsellor at school, who, whatever qualifications that person has, um, said that, that that was that person's advice, was, oh, just let him, if he doesn't want to go, just let him stay home, and, and later it'll be okay, right? And then they went to some doctor, and you never know, when they talk about a sensei here, a sensei could be a really well-qualified doctor, or it could be any quack, and you just doesn't, don't know. But they always listen to these people like they've got the answer to everything, right? And, and apparently the sensei said the same thing. Just, oh, just let him. And, and you get, just get this feeling that nobody wants to push this kid. Like, the parents don't want to push him. They're scared to push him. And the, 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 the teacher at school's scared to push him. And this sensei, this doctor, whoever this doctor is, um, is scared to push him. 
and it's probably partly it's, it makes me wonder if it's partly because of this fear of this suicide thing because uh, suicide amongst high school students is, is still high um, and it is an issue and and whether a lot of these people that are these young parents and young doctors and so on they've come from a background where they had the gambare thing to their limit you know and so now it's swung the other way you know how often generations have, do this in, in in all cultures you know you get one really strict generation then you get a really soft generation you get another strict generation and it tends to swing backwards and forwards doesn't it as people react to what their upbringing was and and do it in a different way and so as a result we're getting this give up thing this give up on oh, moody moody and they, they their parents kept saying that when we're having this talk that people don't usually talk about stuff like this but these guys are relatives they're, they're family extended family and we have kids about the same age as theirs so uh, it sort of came up and I, I wasn't really directly involved in the conversation I was sort of doing a barbecue at the time but I was listening really intently and there was this underlying oh, moody moody you know he, he wakes up some days and it's it's moody right it's impossible it's impossible for him to go to school and, and 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 we're seeing that a lot where people tell you it's impossible you know um, and then adults too we get the same thing um, that barbecue in fact there were people that were supposed to come to that barbecue one particular family was supposed to come to that barbecue and uh, it was moody oh no no moody because you know he's got this happening and he's got that happening and ah oh, moody 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 and it's it's it, it wasn't moody it wasn't impossible it wasn't impossible, it was just that it was difficult or it was, uh, you know, too hard, too hard. And there seems to be this really low bar now where, where you know, I made a video once before talking about the tired thing. You know, everybody's telling you how tired they are all the time and how worn out they are. And and when you know what, what is actually going on in their lives, you know, they'll just be having a normal life. They'll be going to some office 40 hours a week and, and spending most of their time looking busy when they're not and just normal lives. But they'll go on and on and on about how tired they are, you know, because there's this Japanese culture thing where being tired, I made a video, I can't remember what I called it, something like tired and worn out or something like that is considered to be the norm here. So nobody says, hey, when you say, how are you? Nobody goes, hey, I'm great, I'm full of energy. And, you know, no one says, oh, skeleton. Skarata, they say. Skarata. You know, I'm tired. How are you? Oh, it's got a time. And the kids do too. It's pathetic. It really is pathetic. So when you combine that with this give up, this give up thing, the give up and the moody thing, and, and just hearing it more and more and more, and, and occasionally you still hear it again, buddy. I was at uh, elementary school recently for an event, and I heard one kid one kid, there was a kid doing something, and one of the kids said Gambare. And it was really good, because because you rarely hear it anymore. You know, you used to hear it all the time. Everybody would say it. The kids would say it. The adults would say, Gambare, Gambare, Gambare. You know, and everybody would Gambare. But recently, I'm, I swear I'm hearing Gibapu, Gibapu, and Muri more than I'm hearing anything else. So I, I, I know I've got a block at the moment about the examples. So I had a, a hundred examples before I started the video, um, particularly adults. Oh, the, um, the, our friend talking about the English lessons, you know, just the give up, give up thing. And, and sometimes they'll straight out tell him, you know, give up. Um, oh, and we know too. We know, that's right, that was the other one. We know a, a family friend as a boy and because anybody who's ever doing English lessons here I always ask you know um, how's your English lessons going you know and usually they answer etto nandake which means ah <laughs> uh, what is it ah uh, you know because they don't really learn any English but but this one kid you know and um, he's 10 years old he's a little bit chubby because he spends all his afternoons after school eating potato chips and playing switch and, and just about every afternoon, he doesn't seem to do anything else except eat, eat huge bags of potato chips and play Switch. And so recently when we, we ran into these guys at the shopping centre and I said to him, Ah, how's English, right? Can't make an easier question than that. How's English? And oh, uh, and he, he's, ah, etto nandake. And his mother said in, in Japanese, oh, you know, he's, he's um, given up, basically. He's given up. Uh, Difficult, difficult. Mm. So, in other words, in other words, 
he's decided that he'd prefer to stay home and eat potato chips and play Switch for that one hour instead of spending that one hour at the English lesson, you know? And the parents, this is what the parents are doing, they're just letting them. And we're seeing this all the time, that's what our English teacher friend says, is that he's got all these ki all these students that stop, it's, and, and the parents will either say to him, oh, uh, he doesn't want to do English anymore, he wants to stop. So they'll, they'll actually straight out tell him that, he doesn't want to do any more, so, so he doesn't want to do any more, so he stops. It's, it's that simple. They, they still let the kids decide, that was the same as that, that kid that doesn't want to go to high school. The <coughs> parents said, <coughs> they let him decide if he wants to go to school or not. So if he wakes up in the morning and says he doesn't want to go to school, he doesn't go. Isn't that amazing? How many kids, how many of you guys, when, we're, when we were in high school, how many of you guys, if you're given the choice of going to school or staying home, would have, would have gone to school, right? And that's what they're doing. They're giving him the choice. He can decide every day if he wants to go to school or not. And this is exactly what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing in that dojo, all these kids that don't want to go. And the parents will lie for him because in Japanese culture, um, lying about something, about why you're not doing something and saying you've got a fever when you haven't or saying you've got a cold when you haven't is normal in Japanese culture. It's not considered to be lying. It's just considered to be, you know, like a polite way to say that you don't want to do something, basically. And so that's this running, this thread that runs through the whole thing. You know, with that kid, you know, he doesn't want to do it anymore. So he's once given the choice of eating potato chips and playing video games or going to an English class. He's decided he wants to do potato chips and video games, and his parents go, "Oh, okay." And that's what our, our English friend says that that he gets this all the time. The parents will, will either straight out say, "Oh, he doesn't want to do English anymore," so they're stopping, just straight out. That there it is. Or um, they'll make up an excuse that, "Oh, he's busy now with." Um, with club or he's busy with something else so he's going to stop and and he's decided and we see this too parents will turn to kids you know when when our kids are making a plan with with or our um the, we're making plan with other families to do stuff and they'll turn to the kids and ask the kids if they want to do it you know which is sort of sort of okay okay that's fair enough but you know <laughs> Yeah, as parents, we should be guiding our kids, shouldn't we? Not letting they let, letting them decide if they want to do something or if they want to give up, you know, or if it's moody. So it's a it's an amazing thing. It really is an amazing thing. Um, I'm sure as soon as I turn the camera off, I'm going to think think of another really good dozen examples because I'm seeing this all the time. That's what triggered this video. I just had to make it because it just kept coming and it kept coming and it kept coming. The give up thing. And it seems if you are the sort of parent who pushes a look, come on, you know, you can do it, let's go, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go to school, let's go. That now it's considered to be a bit sort of oh, a bit over the top, you know? Not letting the kids decide what they do, what they want and do want to do and don't want to do, you know? And again, there are exceptions. I just had a couple of ex uh, exceptions come to mind, adults and kids who gambare, you know, who do the right thing, but but they're outnumbered now, I'm sure. I'm sure I know way more people who say the gibapu and the and the moody, way more that say that than say gambare. You know, they're outnumbered for sure now. So anyway, there's that. This might come back again because I've got a feeling I haven't quite covered this well enough yet. So this this topic might raise its head again. So and also um, a lot of our people who watch our videos actually live in Japan. So any of you guys have some examples of this? Quite often, the comment section of videos like this is way way more interesting than the video itself. So anybody who's got any examples of kibapu or muri, <laughs> impossible when it's not impossible, we'll be looking forward to hearing all about it from you. Tell us all about it. All right then, that's that. I'm going to have a coffee now. More videos coming soon.